Hi, I'm Peter Switzer. Welcome to the program which puts you in touch with the best and brightest minds in the business. On tonight's show, JB Wiz Mike Kendall will assess the seriousness of the US stock sell off overnight. Is this the start of the overdue correction for Wall Street? The CEO of Insurer TAL, uh, Jim Minto, joins us to explain the success of his company's TV ad strategy, but more importantly, he's championing. To our gender equality in the workplace. That's going to be an interesting one. We test out how important mortgage brokers are for competition with the banks with Peter White, the Chief Executive of Finance Brokers Association of Australia. To see the satisfaction with the Abbott government is growing, but it's not with workers, it's with small and medium um, sized enterprises. We discussed this worrying survey for the coalition with NYOB CEO Tim Reid. And in a shock for sons in family businesses, the firstborn male child is not necessarily seen as the natural successor to the founders, with women nowadays often getting the nod based on merit. Dr Richard Shrapnel of Picture Partners reveals the findings of this surprising survey. Stay with us for the next hour and we'll bring you all the latest corporate news and market analysis, plus learn some valuable lessons from Australian success stories. If you have any questions for me or our guests, email them to switzer at switzer.com.au and you can follow me on Twitter and the handle is at Peter Switzer. But first, the big question, after Wall Street's sell-off overnight and our down day today has to be, is this the start of the overdue US correction? Let's see what Mike Kendall of JB Weir is thinking on this very subject. Mike, how are you going? Good evening, Peter. Pretty tough days for investors just at present. Mm. Well, I reckon you would have thought to yourself, is this the start of the overdue US correction? Oh, certainly reflecting on, on that point a lot, reflecting on a lot of global economic issues mm. and domestic ones, Peter. I think uh, uh, investors, uh, advisors and commentators alike, uh, I think, uh, are grappling with lots of varying issues and uh, with very few clear-cut responses and a lot of uncertainty at the moment, which I think is reflective in this very heavy volatility we're seeing right across global markets. Yeah, we know that the news story said it was the bad uh, economic figures out of Europe and particularly Germany that spooked mm. Wall Street. But also we do know that the, uh, the Russell 2000 index, it uh, went through the death cross where its 50 day moving average went below the, the 200 day moving average and, and all those, sort of, and what, the Russell's down about over 10%. Do you suspect with October and the end of QE3, this is really going to be a test month for the fact that Wall Street, Dow Jones, S&P 500 have, have really ignored a correction for over three years, which is quite weird, isn't it? Well, in some respects, yes, but uh, at the same time, corporate earnings have still been marching forward in the yeah. US, Peter, yeah. off the back of a recovering economy. And last night, the IMF upgraded the growth outlook for the US. Warren Buffett saying comments such as, um, uh, the US markets are down 3.5% over the last couple of weeks. A little bit of value starting to appear on the table mm. while the IMF is saying it's frothy. So uh, a lot of confusing signals for investors to try and manage. But my take on the situation, Peter, is uh, at present we are looking down the barrel of US interest rate increases. Some of that has been uh, winding through equity markets uh, over the last uh, month or so. More, more pronounced, uh, I'd say, in Australia than elsewhere around the world. But uh, as we get uh, closer to the US interest rate uh, increase cycle from US uh, uh, head Janet Yellen, the head, the head of the Fed, Federal Reserve there, I think we're going to see bouts of volatility in the US vulnerable to dips. But you also need to keep in mind there's always balancing arguments, which makes it tough for investors. But at the same time, it is in response uh, to improving US economic uh, circumstances and, Im and uh, improving corporate balance sheets. So uh, I don't think the, the correction or the pullback is necessarily going to be significantly damaging. But I think we, see, we are seeing at present um, a little bit of profit taking for some of the professional part of the market. And I guess, Mike, what the market wants to see, I guess, is how is the rising greenback going to materially affect earnings? And we're going to see that over the next couple of months, aren't we? Absolutely. And, and I think uh, the lead on that is going to be uh, Jan Janet Yellen's comments uh, in the October Federal Reserve meeting. Now, she's consistently said 
uh, that they are going to take their time. They don't want to go and slam the US uh, recovery, economic recovery on its head. But she is looking at uh, the, the economic data, the employment data, which has improved significantly. The US unemployment uh, is now uh, at a better rate to, or a lesser rate than uh, Australian unemployment. So things have really turned the corner in that economy. Uh, and uh, I think they're keeping a very careful eye. But, but at some stage, they're going to move on monetary policy. The <coughs> markets have started to price it in. But I think there's a little bit more to come. Um, a, a viewer called George asked me just today. He actually um, invaded my privacy on the on the walk, but he, he likes to do that anyway, George. Uh, and he said, "Well, how come we're we're so far behind Wall Street anyway? Why has our market taken so long, and we're still so far away from the all-time high when the Yanks have actually you know rocketed past it?" In a nutshell, why, Mike? Well, I, I'd say the major thing, Peter, is that the mining investment booms come off. Um, so the big spending that was driving the Australian economy, being the mining investment boom, expanding Rio, BHP mines, you know, the, the gas, the LNG projects, all of those things, billions of dollars of investment, that's all winding down. At the same time, the iron ore price is winding down. Uh, but the question or, or the gap is what's, what else has taken the slack up as those things have come off in the Australian economy? Mm. And uh, it, it's pretty patchy. Uh, there's been uh, certainly uh, strength in the property sector, but buying an investment property doesn't really add to GDP or add to economic growth. So while that mining investment booms come off, nothing else in the Australian economy has picked up, whereas the US was a long way behind. They're coming off pretty low, uh, a low base, so uh, they have moved ahead in leaps and bounds with a very accommodative uh, monetary policy or very low interest rates to borrow money. Yeah. Also, the fact that we had a high dollar for a long time didn't help a whole lot of companies that are likely to benefit over the next 12 months from the lower dollar. Uh, and, and I think you're dead on there, Peter. The, the big question is, is our market now at a point where further falls in the dollar uh, are really already priced in? Uh, we've seen big selling from international investors. I haven't seen any of my clients ring up and say, sell Telstra, sell BHP, sell Commonwealth Bank. Mm. But that's where we've seen a lot of the weakness in the economy. Um, and it's been really international sellers. If we see the Aussie dollar come off further, are we going to see further selling in these big parts of the market? I think we've probably seen the worst of it. There could be a little bit more downside. But again, uh, I think over the next 12 months, as this lower dollar starts to feed through, it's actually going to help corporate earnings and help the economy. Yep. What do you think about the uh, ABS admission about their, uh, their second rate um, uh, uh, processing, surveying techniques for the job numbers? Well, I think the numbers when they came out over the last couple of months with such a huge surge, particularly in August, raised quite a few eyebrows given it was seemed disconnected with what the reality we were seeing across the Australian economy, which was uh, a slowing in economic circumstances. So no surprises that they've had to eat a little bit of humble pie and say, well, we're going to readjust and hopefully we'll get a very good read tomorrow uh, when the employment numbers come through. And uh, while we're expecting again a further softening in employment in Australia, uh, hopefully the numbers will, will show a little bit more of a reliable reading for, for investment is moving forward. What do you what do you see in terms of uh, investors and their, their level of cash that they're holding? Well, again, this is another interesting thing. You know, we are seeing the market come off. We are starting to see a little bit of value come on onto the table. You know, investors are starting to ask. You know, there's some great yields uh, around the banking uh, and some of the infrastructure and telecommunication stocks. Mm. You know, BHP uh, is not expensive, no. um, and people are starting to. Just drip feed a tiny bit, Peter, but, but people are nervous and I think, I think uh, we've got to look to the US as a guide in the short term, particularly US monetary policy is where things may play out. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but uh, I'm still confident about the future. Glencore uh, has admitted to um, showing no interest now in Rio Tinto. Well, I think uh, Rio Tinto very politely uh, told them, Peter, that uh, they weren't interested uh, in, uh, in looking at a merger. And I think Rio uh, have been very specific and very out in the open uh, about uh, wanting to drive shareholder returns and, and, and drive uh, investor performance. So uh, that has been a very big focus. Their operational performance, like BHP's, has really been excellent over the last 12 months. And I don't think management want any distractions from that at the moment. Given they went down this road with BHP, maybe it's once bitten, twice shy as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think Sam Walsh very politely rebuffing uh, yeah. that, that overture. 
What's interesting, <coughs> though, Peter, is why would uh, Ivan Glassenberg from um, from Glencore be making these overtures at a point where everyone's saying, you know, iron ore's dead for two years. So a very interesting counter-cyclical uh, strategic thinking yep. from Glencore, which requires some contemplation. Yeah, sometimes they, they uh, give the good advice, uh, Mark, is to buy in gloom. Sell and boom. Absolutely. All right, CSL announces a Melbourne expansion. What's the story there? Uh, Peter, again, CSL uh, getting a tick today from investors. Its share price was under pressure a lot of the day, but uh, the announcement that their uh, Alberman um, uh, processing is going to be, they're going to put $210 million into Alberman, which is a blood plasma product that they've had great global success with. I think they're uh, really start to ratchet up their exposure to China, which is an exciting part of the CSL story. And the company announcing uh, they're going to spend $210 million to uh, expand uh, the Alberman uh, production facilities in Melbourne creating 190 jobs, which is certainly uh, great for Victoria, but uh, certainly for CSL, they're uh, putting their money where their mouth is and saying this business has got a lot more firepower in it, so uh, one to watch. Yeah, one last question. Uh, with the share prices coming down, uh, are you fearlessly telling your clients that uh, banks actually look like good value and disregard these stories out there that suggest that banks' balance sheets aren't as good as they should be? Well, it's a bit like saying the property sector is going to crash, Peter. I keep reminding clients how many times over the last 20 years have they read an article uh, almost weekly that says the Australian property market's about to collapse. Yeah. Certainly there are pressure points. Certainly you have to be careful. But I think the banks look interesting at 6 6.5% fully franked. When you get 2.5% on a term deposit, as long as you're prepared to ride out the volatility and have confidence that the Australian banks are strong, which I believe they are, uh, I think they offer reasonable value. But talk to your advisor to make sure it makes sense for you. A very clever little addition there at the end, mate. Good to talk to you, Mike. Thanks, Peter. After the break, we meet the CEO of Tower Australia Limited, Jim Minto.